Did um did Benzino say that Immortal Technique dissed Eminem and he didn't he didn't come after Immortal Technique? Because Im- Immortal Technique, I'm sure a lot of us know. And for those of y'all that don't know, let me pull this up. You see, that's what I'm saying, man. That's the problem with a lot of you stands. A lot of you stands talk all this trash, but you guys don't know about real rappers. Like, you know, they want to come and they want to talk to me about, oh, well, Eminem this and Eminem that. And then I'd be like, well, what about Immortal Technique? And then they're like, who's that? But you want to talk to me about hip hop, right? You want to talk to me about hip hop, but you have no idea who Immortal Technique is. You must not be a real hip hop head. Can we admit that? Can we admit that? I mean, I think Immortal Technique is like one of the realest independent rappers there is out there. It's like as real as it gets. I don't know if he's still active right now, but I'll tell you this. It actually doesn't matter if he's still active, right? It don't matter. You know why it don't matter if he's still active? Because he already made millions. You know, just because, like, this is the problem with a lot of people. A lot of people in hip-hop especially think that a rapper has to be flossing jewelry and flossing all of this stuff to to pretend like, oh, well, if he's not rich, then he's not successful. If he's not rocking Louis Vuitton, then he's not, he's not a successful rapper, and therefore I should not listen to him. That's what a lot of people are thinking. Now, like I said, I'm not sure what happened or where the generations shifted at. But I do believe that um, the mainstream record company executives, they were definitely behind it and a plot behind it. And artists like this were coming out with the message that was just so powerful. They were doing whatever they could do to suppress it. Now, when I really think about it, this like Tom McDonald and how we were talking about all that. This is who he wants to be. This is who he pretends to be. He pretends to be Immortal Technique. He's like trying to be the white version of Immortal Technique. And then he got the song with Ben Shapiro. And then I got to say, that's the funny thing, too, is that Ben Shapiro acts like, hey, because I sold over millions of records, I'm now the number one rapper in the world. You see, so that's what I'm saying, man. Y'all could go ahead and say, well, Eminem's net worth is this much, so he doesn't have to respond. That makes him the number one rapper in the world because he sold over a billion worth of dollars worth of music. Yo, that's awesome, man. We can't deny that. You can't deny that. But if Ben Shapiro goes out there and goes platinum, does that make him a rapper? I don't know. Like, did we all take a time to really think about that? If Ben Shapiro goes out there and sells millions of records, which I'm pretty sure they did. If they got a number one billboard, iTunes, single, facts, facts. But the reason why I bring this up is because I really do believe that this guy uh, pretends to be, or he wants to be a guy like this. He wants to be Immortal Technique. That's who he wants to be, man. He wants to be Immortal Technique. And let me tell you, man, Immortal Technique was very political. Probably one of the most political rappers. This dude said that the FBI would be going to his shows. (laughs) Sound the alarm on that one. FBI would be at his shows. So... You know, you never know, man. All I'm talking about is independent rap right here. So the reason why I bring up Immortal Technique was because basically from what I'm hearing is that some people were saying that Immortal Technique dissed Eminem. So let's take a trip over to the lyrics. And let me see here. What does he say if we pull up? And I mean, this is funny. We could bring up the rap bones. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Milk Bone and all that. And I like Milk Bone. I think he had like that one hit. I think he was a one hit wonder. Now, this is the other point. I bet we could go up to a lot of stands and say, oh, you know about Milk Bone? And they're going to be like, who's that? Who's Milk Bone? I just want to read this part of the verse real quick. And then we're going to go to the Source magazine for those of y'all that uh, need education. Oh, yeah, and I like how you how you talk trash about the Lyrical Lemonade thing. You know, the Lyrical Lemonade thing, it seems kind of cool, but when I checked out their profile, I don't know, man. I don't know. Seems like kind of culture vultures. But, uh, and I'm pissing all in your Lyrical Lemonade stand. He said his 
nigga, young Z dissed you, milk bone dissed you. This is the part right here, Last Emperor. Y'all, y'all know who Last Emperor is? One of my favorite MCs, man. One of my favorite MCs. Yo, so this is okay. Last Emperor is a real MC. And by the way, for those of you probably that don't know, but the reason why I know this is because, like I said, I used to work at Interscope. Last Emperor was actually signed to Interscope, too. Dr. Dre was trying to put in, uh, Last Emperor out. To let you all know, Dr. Dre was searching for a rapper like Eminem way before he found Eminem. But actually, technically, let me take that back, because Dr. Dre actually, like I said earlier, did not discover Eminem. Jimmy Iovine or Eminem was brought to Jimmy Iovine and then Jimmy Iovine took Eminem to Dre. Do y'all understand how this works once you get to the mainstream? People like Dr. Dre do not go out to the club to try to discover talent. And that's what's just so funny to me. And let me just pull up a picture of Dre real quick just so you guys can see who I'm talking about just in case if some of y'all are unaware. Because some of you stands are just so unaware. You know what I heard? Like, I heard this. Some stand told me, hey, uh, Dr. Dre found Eminem in the club. <laughs> Sound the alarm. Can you all believe that? I mean, the internet is right here available to everyone. All you have to go do is go do research. There's plenty of interviews out there of Eminem telling you how he got discovered. And in none of those interviews does Eminem say Dr. Dre discovered him in the club. Man, there's some serious stands out there. There's some serious stands out there. Thank you, fam. I appreciate you. I appreciate the comment. There's some serious stands out there that are just like, so lost man so lost that eminem they're they want to believe the narrative so much you know what i'm saying like they want to believe the movie eight mile so much that they really believe they're like oh no dr dre went to a battle and then he saw eminem battling and that's how he discovered him <laughs> oh you thought you thought dr Dre? you was waiting for that part in the movie right I bet everybody was waiting for that part. For those of you that saw 8 Mile, I know that there's a few people sometimes that live under a rock. Can you believe that I've actually met a few people out there that have never seen The Matrix? I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. Because I think Tucker Carlson even said that he never saw The Matrix. So there's a few people out there, which is strange, right? That Tucker Carlson never saw The Matrix? But... um. There's some people out there that have never seen those movies. Some people never seen Scarface. I used to know people that worked in the movie industry that never saw Scarface. I was like, how could you work in the movie industry and never saw Scarface? So I'm just trying to tell you, man, there's a lot of people out there that don't know what's up. There's a lot of people out there that are behind the scenes that don't know what's up. And when I listened to this verse by Benzino, this is what I thought. And a lot of people said, oh, Cannabis probably wrote that verse. You know what's funny is that some of y'all stands are going to say, you know what you guys are going to say? Oh, who's cannabis? Nobody knows who cannabis is. Who's that? You see, that's what I'm saying, man. It's not about um, who sold the most records. And I understand that that's where hip hop came now or is now. And that's what they told you. Uh, you know, I can't say the particular race of people, but the, uh, <clears throat> you know, you know, you know, those people that were hanging out in tunnels in New York. Those people, the ones that were hanging out in the tunnels in New York, they're the ones that run the record industry, okay? You see what I'm saying? They're the ones that run the record industry. And my point is this, is that if you don't know who cannabis is, just because you want to say, oh, well, he didn't sell as many records, then you don't know shit about hip hop. <laughs> You don't know shit about hip hop if you don't know cannabis. Let me tell you this, man. Cannabis is one of the best battle rappers of all time. For those of you that are just tuning in, this is Craig G who I have on the screen. In case you guys don't know who Craig G is, Craig G is the person who I've heard a lot of people. And if you watch the credits to the end 
of Eight Mile. I'm not going to go through the credits right now, but I believe I remember seeing this. Now, you know, I know when people release things on Amazon or DVD or whatever streaming services people are watching movies on nowadays, they take certain things out. They edit certain things, maybe because of copyright, maybe because of legal purposes. Who knows? But I remember seeing Craig G's name in the credits for Eight Miles. Special thanks. And if you don't know who Craig G is, he's an ultimate battle rapper. He's actually considered one of the greatest battle rappers of all time. One of the most legendary battle rappers of all time who battled Supernatural. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason why I get so animated with that This is not just about money and how many records you sold. This is about hip-hop culture. And I know that a lot of you stands don't even know who Craig G is, who battles Supernatural, who both of these MCs are considered to be one of the greatest battle MCs and greatest freestylers of all time. But what's really sad, what I find very sad in some ways, especially for this hip hop culture is that some of you stands do not even take the time to read the credits. Thank you, we're almost at 10,000 likes. Let's keep it going. Didn't somebody say that yo, M, you only went after pop stars. You went after Moby. You went after Britney Spears. You went after NSYNC, Justin Timberlake. Who else did he go after? Who else? He went after some other pop stars. But you didn't go after the real MCs that came after you. You didn't go after Last Emperor. You didn't go after Pace One. Who was, who you were in one of his videos. Y'all know Pace One? I mean, come on, man. This dude right here is one of the dopest MCs out there. I've had, I've, I've actually had the privilege of uh, working with him. I forgot the name of his song that he had, one of his best songs. Let's go to his Wikipedia real quick. What was the? It was like an alphabet thing. He actually did a song with Zach De La Roca too. CIA criminals in action. Go do your research, like y'all. Y'all need to go look this up. Go look up Ruckus Records. I'm going to drop some jewels on you right now, man. But I think he came with the album or he came with the song where he was impersonating a bunch of rappers like Red Man. This is what the stands would say. They would say, oh, well, you know what? He's not selling any more records anymore. So who cares? Look, do y'all see this though right here? This is what I want to do. I want to go back to Last Emperor. You see right here I have uh, Last Emperor emperor's recording you know what i'm saying if we look over here in the right hand box i know those of you on tiktok can't see this but i'm just gonna explain it to y'all if you look right here you see labels next to raucous and raptivism is aftermath yeah right here y'all he was signed to the same label dr dre that should tell y'all something Dr. Dre, it operates as a subsidiary and distributed through Interscope Records, one of the biggest record labels in the world, which is also owned by Jimmy Iovine. Now, you might say, well, Last Emperor is a dope rapper, right? And he signed, he was signed to Dr. Dre. So what happened? For those of you that don't pay attention, for those of you that don't know what's up with hip hop, you might ask, what happened to Last Emperor? And the reason why we bring up The Last Emperor is because if you guys listen close to the battle, to the diss by Benzino that just came out, Rap Elvis, he actually brought up The Last Emperor in the rap. And he said, yo, M. Yo, M. How come when Last Emperor dissed you, Pull him up. I don't think we need to go back to Elvis, right? 
How come when uh last emperor dissed you? You didn't say nothing. You didn't say nothing when last emperor dissed you, right? But you went after Moby. Oh, and how could I forget? You went after MGK. Like Benzino said, how you gonna let Vanilla Ice diss you? And the point is, is that M didn't want to seem to go after real MCs. Now, who knows? Maybe the streets, maybe Cassidy, maybe uh, Cannabis, maybe they believed in it. Maybe even Last Emperor, who even knows? Maybe Last Emperor actually is the one that wrote this verse. Could that be? Let me Let me zoom in here. Could it be? Could it be that Last Emperor actually was the ghostwriter for the Benzino disc? Rap Elvis? Man, I could see that because that verse was just, whoo, when he started shouting out, Milk Bone, you know, Last Emperor, where was you at? Pace One. Oh, we don't even need to get into the Pace One. Pace One got a classic under his belt. But a lot of you stands out there are gonna be like, who's pace one? You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes it's like I can't even debate y'all. Some of y'all, I'm like, hey, you know what? You want to debate? I'll gladly debate you online. No, you want to argue on Facebook and Twitter for like three or four days, weeks even, if I let some of y'all. No, I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. Let's just debate so I can destroy you in a debate in less than ten minutes. Let me just destroy you in a debate in less than 10 minutes. That's what I'm saying, man. So, yeah. I don't know, man. Y'all tell me. I'd say this. M. Benzino got you on this round. 